Hi, my name is Ty with IOHVAC Controls. Today we're going to review the ESP zoning system from IOHVAC Controls. So first we want to go over the terminals of the zone panel. Today we're actually going to be talking about the ZP6. We also have two, three, and four zone ESP panels as well. Um, but on the ZP6 ESP, you'll see on the left hand side here, these are your six thermostat um, input terminals. On the very top right hand side, that's where you're going to input your 24 volts um, from your transformer. It will require a separate transformer, so do not use your equipment transformer when installing this zone panel. Um, and then these next six terminals are going to be for your damper outputs for each zone system. So in a typical application, um, most of your zones will have one damper, um, but if a certain zone or two has multiple dampers, feel free to daisy chain them to one terminal. Just below your thermostat terminals is your optional night setback thermostat. Um, this is a feature where you can wire in um, a night stat so that it does the programming for you. It puts the panel into occupied or unoccupied mode um, based on the seven day time clock of the thermostat. And that way you don't need to have your zone thermostats all scheduled. Below the night stat is your, where your static pressure sensor wires in. So this is what makes this panel special with the ESP control. You wire in the static pressure sensor into these two terminals here. And when this senses high pressure, it alleviates the, stat the excess pressure through the non-calling zones. Below the static pressure sensor are your two um, duct temperature sensors, um, one for supply air, one for return air. Um, and those temperatures can be visible via the display, which we'll show you in a bit. Just below that is your outdoor temperature sensor. So if this happened to be a dual fuel heat pump system, um, you might want to install an outdoor temperature sensor for your high and low balance point control. Beneath your outdoor temperature sensor terminals is a fault input. Um, so if you choose to do so, you can wire in a fault um, signal from your heat pump system. That fault signal will echo to each one of your zone thermostats, which has a fault um, L terminal output to each thermostat. And lastly, this very large block of terminals is your equipment outputs. So this is where you would wire it to your furnace board or indoor air handler. So now let's say we have this all wired up and installed and we're ready to test it out. Um, we'll make one of our thermostats make a heating call for the sake of the example. So that one makes heating call. You see here the ZD3 for zone damper three LED is on. You can see zone three's actuator or excuse me, zone three's actuator is staying open while the other two are closing. And you can see zone one and zone two's LEDs are off right now, meaning they are either 100% closed or in the process of going to 100% closed. So let's say those clo are closing and hey, the static pressure set point is getting exceeded because obviously with airflow being restricted to zones one and two and zone three being the only one open, that pressure is going to rise. To simulate that static pressure tripping, we're going to press this button. You'll see the static pressure LED is lit. You'll see my two zone dampers um, that are not calling for heat are now on. And you'll hear that they're starting to open over my shoulder here. When I release that button, these two freeze at whatever position that that static pressure sensor said, hey, this is acceptable now. We've reached just below my static pressure set point. Let's stop and hold there for roughly a minute. Um, and you'll see on the zone panel to indicate that they're in that stop and hold position, the zone damper one and zone damper two LEDs are blinking, while zone damper three remains on to indicate that damper is calling in 100% open. We've disabled the ESP function on zones four, five, and six. Um, we'll show you how that's done via the display in a bit. Out of the factory, we ship the static pressure sensor calibrated for 0.35 inches of water column. Um, if you get to the job site, you have this installed and you decide, hey, I need to tinker with that just a little bit. It's very simple. You remove the cover from the pressure sensor. And this is just a dial um, that you can adjust to your liking. Um, it goes from all the way down to 0.08 inches of water column up to 1.2 inches of water column. Typically, a customer is going to put it at either 0.3 
to maybe 0.5 at the high end, play in between that area. Um, but it's completely adjustable, very easy to adjust, um, which is one of the great things about this system as well. The static pressure sensor is going to want to be installed two or three feet down the supply line, but definitely before your first takeoff. So when you power it up, the first um, setting that the display shows you is going to be your supply air temperature. Um, so you can see my sensor's right over here to the right of the panel, so it's just reading what the room is, which is 72. Um, if I hit select, I can see the return air, which is also 72 because it lies right next to the same sensor. The outside air, again, it's in the same area as the two supply and return air sensors. Um, your high limit, so this is the temperature, the supplier temperature at which you're saying um, that that air is getting too hot, it could damage my equipment. Let's um, cycle off the equipment, purge the fan um, in order to protect our equipment. Completely adjustable using the up and down keys. Low limit, um, so same principle, just the opposite. This is the um, supplier temperature um, that you're saying, hey, it's too cold um, in the cooling season. Um, if I continue letting this cold air go over my coil, it could damage it. High balance point. Um, so if you have an outside air temperature installed um, and you might want to, and you have a dual fuel system, you likely want to do high and low balance point. High balance point is the temperature at which we never want to run that gas furnace. We only want to run our heat pump heat um, to keep that efficiency high. Low balance point is just the opposite. It's really, really cold outside, so I never want to utilize my heat pump for heating. I want to jump straight to the gas furnace whenever a heat call takes place. Upstage timer, so this is just a, a yes, no selection. If you select yes, it um, defaults to a 10 minute upstage timer. So if one of your single stage thermostats has been calling for heating for 10 minutes, then the board will upstage your furnace to second stage heating. For example, obviously the same principle works in cooling as well. Um, and this is where we do the ESP function on a per zone basis. So let's say there's a master bedroom that we never want to run ES, we never want to operate ESP on or something like that. Um, you can toggle through these zones. And if there's a dot next to the zone, that means ESP is enabled. And you use the up and down keys to enable or disable it. Um, and if there's no dot, it means it's disabled on that zone. By default, we ship it with it en enabled on all zones. If by chance you th think that the display isn't calibrated, isn't very visible, um, very easy to adjust that a lot of customers don't notice, you just take a small control Phillip head screwdriver. There's a dial right there on the board. And if you turn it, you can see that you can kind of play with the contrast there a little bit. So towards the center of the board, there's a series of dip switches. Um, most of them are just kind of telling them what kind of equipment this board's controlling, heat pump, furnace with AC, that kind of thing. The one I want to point out today is the second stage capacity control. You can see there's four, three, and two zones. When you flip one of those to the left, that many zones has to be calling before the, the zone panel will output a second stage call. So. For example, zone one and zone two have to be calling, and one of those zones has to be calling for second stage in order for this panel to output a Y2 um, from, to the equipment. It also should be noted that when we talked about the upstage timer that's um, selectable through the display, these two can be used in conjunction with one another. So let's for, say, for example, you've enabled the upstage timer, and on your capacity control, you said a minimum of two zones have to be calling in order to upstage to second stage. What that logic would look like is, okay, two zones have to be calling, and one of those two zo zones has to have been calling for 10 minutes before the board will upstage. That way, it's connecting the upstage timer with the capacity control feature. So that's the ESP zoning system. It's super easy to install. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to your sales rep here at IOHVAC Controls. Again, I'm Ty Brown. Thank you for watching.